God's word. Once again, I want to greet each and every one in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. Love you so much. And I believe this will be a blessing. You know, as you're listening to this, pay full attention, you know, because everything, every line, every statement is going to be very important. Okay, so most of the time when we say something important, that is the time we get a call. That is the time somebody comes into our room. That is the time we get diverted. So I have seen this many times. So I'm saying, telling you one more time that, you know, uh, pay full attention to this. So turn your Bible to Hebrews. Book of Hebrews chapter 4. I also want to encourage you to keep reading, you know, Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 is talking about Sabbath rest. So Sabbath is not about a day. It is a shadow in the Old Testament. If you read book of Colossians, it says that it is a shadow. The reality is in Christ. So we have a rest in Christ. So keep this in our mind. Let's read this verse. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. There, therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands. See? What God's word says, the promise of entering his rest still remains, still stands. Let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. So, as I told you already, the background for this is book of Exodus. Children of Israel, they were in bondage and there were a taskmaster continuously now pressing them and they don't have any rest and they were in bondage. They were crying to God. God heard their cry and raised the deliverer called Moses and God gave them a promise of rest. God said that and I'm going to take you to the land, the land which is going to be flowing with milk and honey, meaning it's a blessing. There they are not going to be oppressed, no taskmaster, and they're going to enjoy all God's goodness and God's blessing. You know, actually, that is a God's plan for them. And after thousands of years, the writer of the book of Hebrew tells us, you know, still remains the promise of rest. Still that promise of rest is available for us. So God wants to give you rest. If you don't understand what is rest, I will tell you in another way, inner peace. Okay, rest is not, I'm not talking about physically resting. Physically resting is good. But but if you physically rest too much, we call it as a lazy. So we are not talking here much about physical rest. So if you want to understand this rest, it is about inner peace. You understand? So the still the promise of rest is still available to us. So as I told you in the beginning, rest is the foundation. When God created man, he created him on the sixth day at the end of the day. And the day starts in the evening, according to book of Genesis chapter 1. So on the seventh day, God rested. God rested not because he was tired. God rested because he finished the work and he rested on the seventh day. But for man, that was the first day. The first day, the man, you know, is encountered with the Lord is with the rest. Daddy God taken a time, taken a rest to spend time with his son, spend time with his children. The first revelation about God for Adam is rest. Rest is the foundation. After that, only God gave him job. After that, only God gave him marriage. So before you get married, you should have a job. Before you should have a job and have a good success in your career, in your business, you should have a rest inner peace. You should not be a restless person. We will make a lot of mistakes in our decisions. It will not work. We we'll get uh, tired, we we'll get frustrated. So the rest is the foundation. Everybody say rest is the foundation. So rest is the foundation for everyone. So keep this in mind. Then we started to study about, you know, seeking the kingdom. Why? Because, you know, 
if you are worrying you are not in rest so we started to study from the book of matthew chapter 6 the solution to worry is is in the seeking the kingdom so instead of worrying bible tells us seek first this kingdom and this righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so i told you what seeking means the word seek means to learn to study to understand to seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you hallelujah so i also told you about you know seeking his kingdom means what and we also studied about seeking his righteousness i told you about from book of romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 the gospel which is the good news it's the power of god and in the next verse in 17 it says that you know the the righteousness of god is revealed means the goodness of god is revealed through the gospel so i told you seeking his righteousness means daily you have to see what are the good things god is doing in your life in what way god has been so good to you as you started to see god's goodness every day you will started to experience more goodness more good things will be added unto you so we saw that also then last week we began to see about peace we also saw in the book of romans chapter 14 verse 17 i think the kingdom of god is not about eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost hallelujah so one of the powerful verse kingdom of god is not about eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost we saw about righteousness and we started to study about peace in god's kingdom you know in god's system there is a peace in this world in this world system there is no peace you've seen this world people are living full of living with uh, full of fear and hopelessness full of discouragement no rest but in god's kingdom the one of the important thing is peace everybody say peace as a child of god you should live in peace i want to tell you you know you have to take this very seriously the problem with christians you know sometimes we talk all the right thing we talk all the good things it's all only in the dialogue we don't experience of any of those things we say that you know brother jesus is the prince of peace brother you know when we become a child of god we have a peace but you know what in the name of prayer point we keep on sharing our problem and all the time we are worrying and we don't have peace in our life so you have to take you know seriously this thing that you have to establish your heart in peace you should live in peace at ease you have to take a decision i'm not going to worry i'm not going to live in fear i'm not going to live in anxiety i'm not going to be depressed but i'm going to live in peace so say with me in the name of jesus i refuse to worry in the name of jesus i refuse to fear in the name of jesus i don't have any anxiety attack hallelujah i declare peace i declare rest in your heart right now whoever listening to this i declare peace i declare rest in your heart live in peace so you know what is important and how we can able to live in peace turn your bible to isaiah book of isaiah 26 very powerful verse isaiah 26 verse 3 you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trust in you <clears throat> you see here what bible tells you will keep him in perfect peace who will do that god will keep you in perfect peace but what we should do all we have to do is just to focus upon the lord your mind everybody say mind you see mind is very important in church you know hardly they talk about the mind 
when we talk about the mind they think that you know we follow some secular people but bible talks about the mind so much god has given us this mind if you use it properly it will be a blessing if you don't know how to use it it will cause all kinds of misery in your life so say with me mind is important what's going on in your mind is important as a man thinketh in his heart so is he bible tells us what as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so here i want to tell you this your mind is very important if your mind is fully focusing upon the lord you will have peace god is telling us to keep our mind upon him when we do that when our mind is focusing upon the lord and god will solve all our problems he will take care of all our problems he will deal with all those problems and he will keep you in perfect peace my god think about perfect peace so why we are not experiencing peace because our mind is not upon the lord we are mind is upon so many things our mind is upon so many things we are concerned about the bills we are concerned about the health we are concerned about the husband wife and the children and the job and the business the issues so many things we are concerned about it the more you keep thinking about the problem the more you will not have peace the more more you will have fear and worries and all kinds of concern and stress so god is telling us he will keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed upon him so all you have to do is just sit and think and think up with the lord and focus upon the lord so i'm going to teach you practically you know i am not the preacher just tell people what to do i i am also kind of a preacher who tell my people how to do it i am going to give you uh, you know some practical suggestions but think about this our job is to know stop worrying stop worrying just focusing upon the law and his job is to keep us in perfect peace will you do that take a decision today i am not going to worry about anything i refuse to worry in the name of jesus i am not going to worry about my marriage i am not going to worry about my business i am not going to worry about my career i am not going to worry about my children all i am going to do is just to focus upon the lord i am going to think about the lord i am going to meditate upon him i am going to fully focus upon him as you keep your mind upon the lord he is going to keep you in perfect peace you don't try to solve any problem just focus upon him he is going to do that for us hallelujah but uh, our mind is you know worried about so many things luke chapter 10 verse 38 onwards if you started to read you will understand you know jesus telling martha it's like you know often you know jesus telling us today martha martha you are worried and troubled about so many things you don't need to worry about trouble you don't need to worry and trouble about so many things only one thing is needful what is that one thing to sit at his feet see i want to tell you sometime you know the problem with us is it's like you know there are certain things are very famous very familiar but we don't understand certain things like for example seeking his kingdom everybody knows but you know seeking his kingdom does not mean just to, you know when you wake up first starting your day with your prayer no seeking his kingdom means learn to study to understand about the kingdom how kingdom of god works that's what seeking his kingdom means so in the same way sitting at his feet means just you know most of the time you know how we do that sitting at his feet means we are sitting uh, sitting and started to sing some songs worship the lord maybe speaking in tongues maybe we uh, you know praying for others pray or even praising you see our mouth is never silent 
so today i want to tell you make this clear and understand sitting at his feet means sitting in silence everybody say silence sitting at his feet means sitting in silence most difficult thing in the world to do is sit silent just try this you know you close the close the door sit in a house one hour don't do anything don't touch your phone just close your eyes and sit it's very difficult we are so restless so i want to make this clear if you want to be like mary sitting at his feet meaning you should sit in silence mary was not talking mary was not interceding mary was not praying for anyone all these things are not wrong but you know there is a time for all those things there are there is a time to intercede there is a time to praise there is a time to uh, sing a song and uh, speak in tongues you can do that i'm not saying don't do those things but if you if you really want to practice his presence if you really want to sit at his feet you know what really sitting at his feet means sitting in silence mary was not doing anything mary was not talking she was in rest complete 100% rest and she was sitting and just admiring the lord and listening to his word jesus said martha martha you are worried and troubled about so many things but only one thing is needful that is mary has chosen that what is that only one thing is needful do you believe jesus will use his word carefully if we say only one thing is needful do we focus on that one thing think about this jesus said only one thing is needful only one thing only one thing only one thing is needful to sit at his feet just to you know sit in silence and you know learn to focus your mind upon the lord if your mind is upon the lord you will live in peace if our mind is upon so many things we will not have peace so already i read this passage but you know i love to read this passages again and again turn your bible to philippians turn your bible to philippians book of philippians chapter 4 verse 4 onwards rejoice in the lord always again i will say rejoice maybe next week i'll talk about the joy but let's focus on the verse 5 let your gentleness be known to all men the lord is at hand you see here what bible tells us bible tells us let your gentleness known to all men that means you know people should see that you know you are not a, a person uh, who are anxious fretting worrying bible tells us you know people should see that you are a cool guy bible should bible tells us that you know let your gentleness known to all men because god is at hand means god is with you so relax let your gentleness known to all men god is at hand and the next verse is saying it's very beautiful do not be anxious about anything i want you to know take this verses and read it and read it until it sink into our heart until we understand this verses until our eyes open for this passages i want you to take your bible this all we keep studying this verses which our verse i'm quoting today i want you to take time to study this verses bible tells us be anxious for nothing that means refuse to worry be anxious for nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god you have a problem first stop worrying when you have a problem just stop worrying the first thing you have to do is stop worrying about your problems i know it's difficult but you can do it i'm telling you god will give you grace 
you can you can tap into those graves where you come to a place where you don't worry for anything believe me you can live a life without any worries people think that you know, it is not possible i am telling you it is possible in the name of jesus god will give you grace to live a life without worries bible tells us be anxious for nothing but give your request your petition your supplication to god then bible tells us as we do that and the god of peace or else you know the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus wow i feel like you know keep reading this verse again and again my brothers and sisters when we stop worrying and start to give our request if you have any concern just give it to the lord lord i don't know what i'm going to do about this just i'm giving to you just give it to the lord whatever your concern just give it to the lord bible tells us cast all your cares upon him because he cares for us so just give give all your all your problems all your cares upon the lord and bible tells us when we do that the peace with surpasses peace which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus wow it's not our ordinary peace the peace with passes all understanding td jakes calls it as a crazy peace people cannot able to understand your peace is going to give you peace with pass with all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the next verse you know also very important after seeing all these things the verse 8 says finally brethren whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise think about these things you see it's all about your thinking god is giving us a suggestions if you constantly thinking about your problems you are not going to experience peace in your life but if at all you want to think think only good things think what is commendable think what is excellent think what is honorable think something lovely think something beautiful think something good think something pure i don't know have we ever done this you know i am doing this often nowadays sometimes just sit and observe your thoughts most of the time our thoughts are vain imaginations most of the time our thoughts are useless most of the time our thoughts are unreasonable most of the time our thoughts are not pure so here bible tells us it's all about your mind my brothers if your mind is upon the lord if you are thinking and meditating upon good things you will have peace the reason we don't have peace is we are constantly entertaining our mind with all kinds of nonsense all kinds of nonsense you know if you only observe your thoughts you will know that you will laugh at yourself unreasonable thoughts the thoughts which is not going to benefits us there is no logic you know all kinds of you know vain thing is going on in our mind so bible tells us if you want to have peace if you want to live in peace and if you want to maintain that peace that you should only think and meditate upon good things You understand you should only think and meditate upon good things so in order to do that practically there are uh, three kinds of things i'm going to tell maybe i'll start with one today which is every which is known for everyone you know the one of the way to keep your mind focus upon the lord huh? one of the way to keep your mind focus upon the lord is to meditate on his word okay so turn your bible to book of joshua chapter 1 verse 8 everybody knows this joshua. here what bible says 
this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success you see one of the way to keep your mind focus upon the lord if i tell you think about the lord you may try to think about the lord but you don't know because you know you don't have any particular image to think about him okay so you, you you don't know how to think about him you don't know how to focus on him bible tells us you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee if you want to keep focus your mind upon the lord so one of the simple way you can start with meditating upon his word why don't you take some time to ponder upon god's word instead of you know keep on thinking about i have done this i have done that i should do this i should do that my god i want to tell you excessive thinking is a disease which is killing people today all kinds of disease you know heart attack cancer everything you can trace to this excessive thinking 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 all the time what to do 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 by constantly thinking what to do what to do you know it is an energy drainer it creates lot of stress by thinking what to do what to do you lose your peace instead of constantly you know i one time i observed you know what's going on in my mind and i started to observe i found myself you know keep on thinking what to do what to do by keep on thinking what to do what to do what to do you know you cannot go to solve the problems you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the so you can start with meditating upon his word take any passages take any passages i i you know i read about a sadhu sundar singh many years before when i started my christian life i don't like sadhu sundar singh i used to think what is this sadhu leaving everything and uh, wearing this saffron kind of dress i used this sadhu sundar singh you know i don't like him much but as i grew spiritually and recently i come to know that sadhu sundar singh is a great man who walked with god so one of the things sadhu sundar singh used to do it seems like he used to go to some uh, solitary place like jungle forest or mountain and somewhere some kind of place where nobody will disturb him and he started to read a certain portion of scriptures and started to think about it you know the whole day started to think and meditate and ponder upon those verses you know what happened after he was soaking himself soaking his mind upon the word pondering upon the word something supernatural sometimes began to happen it seems suddenly he started to have an encounter with the angel sometime even the lord himself appear and teach him so many things and suddenly he will have been you know, all kinds of supernatural experience so sadhu sundar singh used to go to a, a kind of lonely place and started to read a portion of scriptures and started to think and think and think you know soaking his mind upon the word and it opened doors for him for all supernatural experience you know that psalm 1 bible tells us the same thing encouraging us to edit meditate upon his word day and night so take some portion of scriptures and start to you know instead of worrying about so many things just you know meditate on the scripture so as you are meditating on the scripture it will help you to focus your mind upon the lord bible tells us you know you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee you see i am quoting this scripture again and again so that you will have a revelation so that you know your eyes will be opened you want to have a perfect peace your mind should be upon him 
then you will have a rest to your soul. Most of the time our mind is about so many things. We are concerned about so many things. So number one, to begin with, meditate upon his word. Take a portion of scripture, some of your favorite passages. If it is regarding healing, why don't you take some passage concerning healing? Start out to meditate and think and pray over the scriptures. If you need for finances, why don't you take some scripture related to finance? Whatever you believe in God for, why don't you take some scripture? Why don't you meditate upon God's name? You know, God's name reveals his character. Is if God's name reveals his attributes, why don't you meditate upon God's name? El Shaddai, God of too much, more than enough. God has many breasts. He can able to feed everyone. El Shaddai, the God of too much. I meditate. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner. Hallelujah. So, meditate upon his names. Meditating upon scripture, meditating upon names will help you. So, with this, I will close for today. The time is up. So, that is all this.